Welcome to the Fun and Games Podcast. I'm your host, Brittany Lupkin, and let the games begin. Hello, and what's up? Welcome back to the Fun and Games Podcast. I am so happy to be here, and I'm happy that you're here too. Listen, last week's episode... I'm not going to lie. I was so jet lagged. I was just in my bed recording and I'm so happy I was able to do a recap of the UK trip, but I'm really just happy to get back in here, have a heart to heart chat with you. And today's episode is extremely special. It is something that I took an idea from one of you. So thank you so much for this request. It's requested from Danny, and it's an episode all about what is something we would tell our younger selves. And I love this so much because in any stage of our life, there's something that we can even learn from this episode, whether we're younger or even a little bit older. There is so much that a lot of us have been able to process and go through. And I know when it comes to our health and fitness journeys, right, air quotes, It's natural for us to think more about physically how we're doing, how we're looking, instead of looking inside, how are we emotionally doing, how are we mentally doing, and I think that's a huge part that I also really want to focus on. So I think that this is the perfect episode to kind of take a moment and have us all reflect on our past and just see how far we really have come. We do not give ourselves enough credit for how hard we work every single day. Me talking to myself as well. You guys know I really struggle with imposter syndrome. I really struggle with feeling worthy sometimes because I get in my head a lot of times and I have to constantly kick that out and say, no, I deserve to be here. I'm okay and I am enough. And for me, a lot of that comes from reflecting. Like I can dig deep to, I can reflect back on my journals. I'm big into journaling. But just to see, wow, I really have come a far way looking at these old videos or photos or again, reading my old journals and seeing how I used to think and how my thought process and mentality has changed so much. Even from last year, it was insane because I was comparing, not like a bad comparison, but just saying, "Mm, I wonder where I was last birthday because I recently had a birthday and I was just remembering my thought process and my patterns and I'm like, wow, I have grown so much. I feel like this past year, I have had some of the biggest self-growth opportunities than ever before and I am in such a better place mentally and physically and emotionally. I am just so happy and grateful to feel that, especially coming through an intense postpartum depression and that journey is just one and of itself alone, absolutely insane. So this week is all about reflection and that is the word of the week as well, which is perfect for today's episode. And you know, I got to read the review of the week. Today's is from Emily K716. It says, simply the best. I've never been a podcast girly, but Brit has changed everything for me. This is the first podcast I've been consistently listening to, and Wednesdays are my favorite day now. I've learned so much, and I've never felt more seen and heard, and I love that I get to be part of this great community. Seriously, girl, thank you so much for all your hard work and dedication. It doesn't go unnoticed. I absolutely love ya. P.S. Come to Charleston, South Carolina. It's hands down the best moving choice, and we need a good gym. Winky face. Ah! (laughs) Oh, I love this so much. We have definitely considered Charleston. Like, I think Darian and I have decided where we're going to go and we have one more trip where he's going to tour the hospital shadow and make sure it's a position that he likes because he low-key does have an offer. (laughs) Congrats to my man. I'm so proud of him. I could cry. Like this is something he's been working so hard for. Oh, let me not get emotional. Let me not get emotional. Bring it back. Bring it back. Um, But if that doesn't fall through, I mean, we love Charleston. You heard Darian say it himself. One of his favorite places. So, and Starting a gym would be a dream. I just don't know if I want to take so much time away from my family. It would need to be something where I have a big partner where they handle a lot of it and I can just step in for creativity or something like that. So I would love to partner or something like that to have a gym, but I really, again, I don't want it to take too much time away from my family. So that's that's the hardball. That's why I'm like teetering on that. But what a dream. That would be amazing. And For me, like, I am so happy that you feel part of this community. I'm so happy that you're loving the podcast. Everybody who came up and said they listened to the podcast at the event or just in general, uh, like, it means so much because this is where I feel like I can connect on such a deeper level to all of you. And also, thank you for saying that my hard work does not go unnoticed. So you all know I've been struggling with that just a little bit of again, just not feeling good enough. And I'm just, I'm working through that. I'm working through that. So this 
means so much. Every single review, it means so much. We read them all. Darian is constantly screenshotting them. I feel like a broken record because I always say that, but genuinely, even to this day, we talk about your reviews all the time. So thank you. It is my motivation to keep going and it really just helps me feel so much better so that I can keep helping you. So it's like this positive cycle. We love it. I love my gal. I love this community and thank you so much. Man, I'm getting I'm getting a little bit emotional, you guys, because I'm thinking we have a year left. Little little split up, little tangent before we hit into the episode. But yeah, we have a year left here in Michigan. And it's kind of surreal because first of all, I can't even believe we've already lived here for two years. And since we're talking about reflecting, I have grown so much since moving here. I moved a lot all growing up. I'm an army brat. I've moved every two years and constantly starting over. And for me, it's cool because I get to see each move, how much I've grown. And I love that sense of growth. I love being able to reflect. I'm really big on that. And again, journaling really helps me be able to see where my head was at, where my mindset was at. And for me to be able to look back and say, well, I remember living in Arizona. I remember how things were. I remember where my state was mentally and I was such a mess. I was just so unhappy in that place. And Michigan, I feel like I was able to branch out and start being more true to myself and slowly start to recover, really step into and own being a mom. And I feel like such a woman now. I don't know if you guys have had this kind of flip, but I feel like I'm stepping into adulthood. I don't know how else to explain it. I don't know why when I thought I was like 22 or 25, like I would quote feel like an adult, but now I really feel like I am and I feel more of like a woman and I feel that I can embrace that and I don't have to try to be this 18 year old girl anymore that I was in college as 21 year old carefree girl. Like I held on to that for so long of just that's how I need to be and I I fought and fought and fought kind of just growing up, I would say and I don't know. This is like word vomit because I'm just speaking this as I'm reflecting, sitting here, getting ready for this episode. But I really feel like I've come into my own this past year. And for me, I don't know that. I just feel so much happier and confident in who I am and proud of who I am and owning my choices, my decisions, feeling confident to make them, feeling confident to step into whoever I am and owning that. And for me, that is so empowering. I feel so much stronger mentally and physically. So let's chat about other things that you guys wish you knew when you were younger, just kind of an advice, a letter to your younger self so we can all reflect and see maybe we can learn from each other. I love this. So let's dive in. And thank you to everyone who has written in as well. Thank you so much. You helped make these podcast episodes that much more special. There are so many good ones. So I'm going to read some of these and elaborate on some and some I'm just going to read because there's so many and I love them and some of them you just don't need anything added to them. So the first one is going to be don't settle in anything. Don't settle in relationships, don't settle in your career, etc. I love this one because even when I was younger, I remember having a couple of boyfriends, one in particular who I was 100% settling and it was the hardest the hardest relationship to get out of. I cannot even tell you guys, I did not even want to be in this relationship in the first place. I was embarrassed by this relationship. I had, There was nothing for me, but in that relationship, I felt that I was made to feel that I was absolutely nothing if I left. If I left, like that would be the end of my life. That would be the end of everything. Like I was nothing without this person and that is so toxic and I'm so thankful. There were so many red flags. Like even my mom talked to me about this. Like there were so many red flags, so many horrible, horrible things. Now that I reflect back on, I'm like, what was I thinking? But again, I cannot say that enough. Do not settle in anything in your relationships don't settle in your career. If you want to make moves, make them. And I feel like that is such an amazing push right now with the millennials, with Gen Z of, hey, you know what? We're going to find something that suits us. We're really going to work hard and not settle. Keep pushing, pushing the limits, pushing what we can do and really just dreaming big and going after them and seeing what we can do with that. 
on top of what I was kind of saying, the, another one that I love so much that piggybacks on this is to not fight to get out of the hard seasons so fast. This person says, those will shape you, not break you. I also cannot agree more to this. Again, I learned so much from that past relationship. He was also in medical school and like he thought he was just so freaking cool. He was like, I never have time for you. I'm so busy. I'm so important. Like get used to it. It's only going to get worse. Like when I'm a doctor, like he had all that, like he literally was just not a good person. And I, I really hope that he's matured and changed. And I assume he has, but stark contrast to that with Darian, who's also in the medical field. Darian immediately would call me every single day. He always made sure I was taken care of. He'd be in the middle of the hospital, like during his shift, he'd have a five minute break and he'd say, hey, I'm calling you. I only have five minutes. I really just want to check in on you. How are you doing? Are you okay? And I was like, oh my gosh, like if somebody wants to make time for you, they will. I will say that again. If somebody wants to make time for you, they will. And I cannot scream that loud enough. Like if you're in a relationship and the person just literally makes you feel like they have no time for you, you are not important, you're not a priority. And like you can give them a little bit of a chance to change, like bring that to their awareness. You have to have that open communication. And if nothing changes, like nothing's going to change 10 years down the road when you're married with kids. Like they're just not going to have time for you. They're not going to make that time for you. That is definitely something. But anyways, don't fight to get out of the hard season so fast. Those will shape you, not break you. Because again, I feel like all of my growth has come from the hard times. It's so crazy to me. So every hard experience I have had, when I come out of it, that is when then I can reflect and say, wow, I have grown so much as a person. I have learned so much. Like that was really grueling. That was really difficult. But I am so much better of a person through that. I have so much more life experience. I can relate to so many other people. I can help other people going through this same thing. For me, one instance is in college. Oh, I can't believe I'm sharing this, but this is what comes to my mind. There was a really hard time where one of my really close friends got into a car accident and one of the people in her car ended up passing away. I was actually supposed to be in that car on that ride from college. Like we'd take a break. We'd do like weekend trips somewhere. And I was supposed, I was going to the same place as they were, but at the last second I decided, okay, I'm going to drive my own car. And I remember driving and I passed this horrible wreck on the way. And I'm like, for whatever second, I'm like, wait a minute. I like know those people, but I kept driving. I didn't stop. Like, I don't know. I just like had that feeling. And I was like, no, no, like that's probably not the case. And I kept driving. Okay. This is back. This, <laughs> this is going to date me. This is back when your phone had minutes. So my phone, I guess I ran out of talking minutes. I can, I am so, ex I'm exposing myself right now. I ran out of phone minutes. I was supposed to be in that car. So when I was not picking up the phone, like all my friends knew I was in there, they heard about this accident. They were calling me and being like, oh my gosh, like Brittany must've been in the car. She's not answering. Like she's not going to be okay. She's going to be in the hospital. Anyways, this was a very, very traumatic experience for me because I was supposed to be in that car. My poor friend is grieving. Everybody is severely injured. Like it was a really big deal. Even at our school, like this was a massive deal because somebody had passed away. And literally it was one of my best friends who was driving. I was supposed to be in that car. I knew everybody in that car. We were all really good friends. Like this was a very difficult time for all of us to have to go through that. And it was a very long fog for me to be in like even just supporting my friend even though directly it didn't affect me it did because I just I'm a feeler like I was feeling the pain and we were rooming together and there was just a lot of trauma and I know that trauma still exists now and I remember literally crying on my bathroom floor in college just sobbing thinking like is this ever going to go away are we am I ever going to feel normal again and I remember people coming up to me being like, oh, you're still sad over that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like some, it had been like three months and somebody was like, oh, <laughs> you're still upset about that. I'm like, what? you're joking, right? People, anyways, I don't know why, why I even brought that up. But I remember now looking back how much I grew through that and where I was able to find strength during that time. Also coming out of my postpartum depression. I feel like a completely different person. And like I said, I feel so much stronger. I feel so much more capable now than I had ever before. I would not be as strong 
mentally or physically now than I was before I had Vinny. Like I could not get to this point without going through that pain and that suffering. I could not because I feel like a force to be reckoned with mentally. I am so sure of myself. I'm so strong mentally and not saying that in a prideful way, but just like I feel so confident in who I am as a woman and knowing that I have given birth, knowing that I'm capable, I'm able to recover from that. I can come back stronger. I can still hit my career goals. That is so empowering to me. And I would not know that without the intense suffering and the pain that I had to go through and the sacrifice every single day, even now as a mom, it never turns off. I literally came home from the UK. I fell asleep at 2.30 a.m. Vinny comes into my room at 4 a.m. Did I get a break? No, I'm right back on as a mom. So for me, I feel so strong and so capable and I love that. So don't rush through the hard times. Sometimes you are in that dark place and you are like, is this ever going to end? You will see light again. You will see light again if you are struggling. It may not seem like that a lot of times and a lot of times I struggle speaking when I'm in that dark place for one reason I don't even realize I'm in such a dark place sometimes I don't realize how depressed and sad I am until I come out and then I'm like wow wait a minute that was such a a hard place that I was in and sometimes I try my best to share that I'm going through that because it's not talked about as much when you're actually going through it so again Better days are coming. I know it's hard, but give yourself grace. And that is actually one of the little bubbles. It says that exact same thing. I am so proud of you. Better days are coming. I know it's hard, but give yourself grace. To lighten the mood a little bit, this one says, you don't have to know who you are yet. It's not something you have. It's something you create. And I love this because when I'm 18, 19, you know, 20, 21, like younger ages, even in high school, like you want to be grown up already. You want to have it all together. You want to know who you are, but you're still so young. You're still so developing. And even now I'm still so young and I'm realizing how true this is. Like I haven't realized this until I read this. And this has given me a lot of peace and comfort because I feel like I'm still in that creation phase of, I don't have to know who I am yet. This isn't something I have. It's something I'm going to create my decisions, my actions every single day are creating the person that I want to be. That's why it's so important to have the habits that you want in place, to do the things that you want to little by little every single day. That way you are creating and building the life that you want and the person that you're going to be. You envision who you want to be and you've got to align your actions to that, whatever that is. Today's podcast is sponsored by Green Chef. We all know by now how obsessed I am with meal kits. I love nothing more than opening up my front door and having a box full of food and already prepped recipes for that day. It is so hard for me to stay on top of healthy eating at times. So it's so nice to have dinners already prepared and shopped for and just delivered right to my door. It makes a Darian and I's life so much easier with him being in grad school, with me working and being a mom. And also the meals are always so delicious. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well with dinners that work for you. Green Chef also has options for every lifestyle. So whether you're vegan, you're vegetarian, or if you're gluten-free, they've got you covered. I cannot wait for my next Green Chef box to come and to make some amazing recipes. Some of my all-time favorites are blackened chicken cutlets and grits. Are you kidding me? Cumin spiced shrimp, even steak and creamy Parmesan shrimp. You've got to be kidding me. Steak and shrimp, let's go. So go to greenchef.com slash Brit60 and use code Brit60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. The next one says, don't spend time hating your body. Our bodies are incredible. This. Let me just say that again. Don't spend time hating your body. Our bodies are incredible. This is also something we talked on the panel chat at the Lyft Manchester event where we are so hard on our bodies, whether it looks like or we're fluctuating, we're bloated. Like we put so much time and energy and concern into what we look like. I think our focus should be more on how we feel. But even more important, aside from that, is just realizing that our bodies are meant for so much more than just to look a certain way, than just to be looked at, period, in general. Like it does not matter. We want to be healthy, yes, so that we can live a long and happy life and to help prevent any additional diseases. Just being healthy makes you feel so much better and more capable 
for me, it's important so I can run around and play with Vinny. Like we go to the park for hours. I love that I'm healthy enough to run, to play soccer, to have that kind of energy because I'm fueling my body and I choose to train and try to have some kind of exercise so that I can have energy to play with my kids. For me, that is important. But I think that that takes priority and it should take a higher priority than doing things just to look a certain way because a lot of times I know in the younger space females are just thinking about being skinny and shrinking themselves and with that comes a lot of side effects and I love that people are opening up and talking about things that they've struggled with and they don't feel strong or confident when they're trying to be the smallest version of themselves. They feel strong and confident when they're taking back their life. When they're in the gym, they're lifting weights, they're doing things for their mind and their body. And it's not just about shrinking yourself. So again, don't spend any of that time hating your body. Try to get out of that cycle. I genuinely from being pregnant to postpartum, I've learned so much more about myself than I could have ever imagined. And one of those things was loving my body through the process of seeing all the hard work and the dedication that I had put in to get a certain way. And then to see that slowly fade as I was getting pregnant and carrying baby Vinny and then postpartum dealing with all of the weight loss and trying to restore my core, fix my diastasis recti, like just heal my body from the inside out because it had gone through so much when carrying a child and growing a human being for nine, 10 months. So for me, that was a big awakening. Why would I ever hate my body? Even though it's going to look different, it is my body and it is capable of so much more. It is meant for so much more than just to look a certain way. I'm able to move freely, happily, without pain. Like That is such a blessing. If you can wake up and you are pain-free, you have ability in all of your bodies. You can run, you can jump. That is a blessing. That is something to not take for granted ever. And I love this one because in some sense, when I was pregnant, I couldn't work out to my full extreme as I'm used to, you know, hitting PRs, shooting for strength. I wasn't able to do that for a couple of years. So I missed that. And I realized I had been taking my exercise and my health for granted because when you're pregnant, you can't do all of the same things. You can't even eat some of the same foods and you don't realize that until it's taken away from you. So just finding gratitude for everything and in your state because sometimes you just don't know how good you actually have it until something like that is taken away from you something like your health is taken away from you so that's an amazing one I'm so happy we got a chat about that this one I think is kind of fun and maybe you need to hear it it says it doesn't matter what the mean girl from high school or your younger years thought of you and I just wanted to say that because a lot of times we hold on to some of the past words and comments and just kind of meanness that we got in elementary, middle, high school, even college when we were younger. You know, we've all had those times where mean things have been said to us and some of those really stick with us, whether family members or if it is somebody, a bully from high school or something. And that sticks with us, especially in those younger years because those are our formative years. And it's okay. It's time to let go of that. You are not that same person. And It's okay to be at peace and to move on from that 100%. Let it go. It does not matter what anyone else says about you or thinks about you. You are the person who knows yourself the best. So be true to who you are. This one's a little bit personal and I kind of love it. It says, I'm 23 now and I would tell my 16 year old self that it gets better. The anger I feel will pass and I will be stronger. I love this so much. This is like a pep talk to show and in that reflection to be able to see like I was really struggling when I was 16 now I'm 23 and I tell myself to keep pushing forward keep moving on because it does get better I just love that so much I'm gonna read a few kind of back to back just give you some food for thought one is to always remember that you are enough someone says life is never as bad as it seems one bad day does not mean a bad life it will get better And that's true. I've tried to look for the good in each day. You know, there are some bad days where really there just are no nothing good. But for the most part, even though I've had maybe a rough morning, the rest of the day can still be good and not trying to, you know, doom the rest of the day when maybe I've had a little bit of an off morning. And even if you've had a bad morning, that doesn't mean that your entire life is bad. Kind of separating the two, trying to get back into a positive mindset. I love that. 
Emma says, in your darkest day, keep pushing. You never know what lies at the end of the tunnel. And I love that because so many times during those dark and hard times, it is very hard for us to want to keep pushing forward. But being a survivor of a lot of those really difficult times, I've realized I'm so grateful I stuck it out for the better days because they are so worth it. This next one is fantastic. It says, don't let the opinions of others or fear of not being perfect stop you from trying things. I feel like I have definitely talked about this on this podcast and a lot because the fear of failure can be such a hindrance to so many and just the fear of just not being good enough or letting the opinions of others really bog you down instead of being true to who you are. It is very hard, but you will find so much freedom when you can push through and just try these things. You'll feel so much better. And another person said, this kind of goes hand in hand, there's more room for failure than you think. If you learn from your failures, they will not ruin you. And that actually makes me think of something that I actually just read and I wanna share it because it's fantastic. I think it's from, I think it's Bill Gates who like shared things he had learned from and I wanted to share it with you. Okay, so there's two points I want to read. The first one is quitting is for winners. And he says, contrary to unpopular opinion, quitting is for winners. Knowing when to quit, change direction, leave a toxic situation, demand more from life, give up on something that isn't working and move on is a very important skill that people who win at life seem to have. Okay, and to me, this shook my core, you guys, because all the time I've been growing up hearing, oh, don't quit, don't quit. But this is actually a fantastic point that there is a time where it is good to quit. When you know to quit, if you're in a bad relationship, if you're in a toxic situation, if you need to just change directions, nothing's wrong with that. We should constantly be evaluating and say, what's working for us, what isn't? Don't be afraid of that change and kind of break that mold and that mindset that we have to stick with something even when it gets hard, which yes, we wanna be diligent, but sometimes things aren't serving us. It's okay to let go of that. And I just, I found a lot of freeing into that. I love that. The second one was taking no risk is the biggest risk. He says, you have to risk failure to succeed. You have to risk rejection to be accepted. You have to risk heartbreak to love. If you're always avoiding risk, you're risking missing out on life. And honestly, I, this one was, is also hard for me to learn. But that's something I would tell my younger self is all of my biggest wins have been from taking a risk, even if that risk did not immediately pay off or even if that risk kind of flopped, I learned from it and I can get back up and move on and be able to just continuously improve and get better. I love both of those. So that's kind of where my mind went because I just read those a little bit ago and I wanted to share them with you. Ooh, this is such a good one because this is when I like to say a lot. This person said, it's never too late to start your journey. Educational, spiritual, career, health, fitness. I cannot agree enough with this one. It is never too late. Get it done. Start now. You will thank yourself. I truly believe that we have so many opportunities in life. Take them, create your own, make new paths, and it is never too late to start. I hate that feeling because when I was in the fourth grade, I was what, nine, 10? I thought I was starting gymnastics late and so I stopped doing it because I felt like I was already so behind. Girlfriend, you were 10, you're not behind. I like, no, I wish I would go back and tell myself to keep up with it. Like that is just something that I wish I saw through because I really felt that I was too late to the game. So it is not too late to start ever. You will always regret it. Every single day you push it off, you will regret it. So get it done. If something is pestering you, it is that feeling for a reason. Follow it and listen to your gut. Oh my gosh, I love this one. It is simple and sweet. It says your timing is your own. Oh, this is something that I truly have stepped into. And I think along with this womanhood journey of realizing that my choices are my own. My timing is my own. I don't need to follow what I feel like other people want me to do. I don't need to follow what I feel like is the societal norm. I can make decisions based on me because my timeline is mine alone. And I love, love that for me. And I want you to know that as well. 
And this one plays off it really well. It says there's no deadline for life. Everyone goes at their own pace. You are not behind. Again, listen to that again. There's no deadline for life. Everyone goes at their own pace and you are not behind. Again, the comparison thing, we compare our lives to others so much that at times we can feel behind, we can feel alone, we can feel that we're failing when in all reality, our timeline is different than someone else's. And I love that this person said there's no deadline because that's so true. Maybe things aren't happening for you at 21, but maybe your life will be popping off at 40. Like that is still your life. A lot of times we just think, oh, pow, our life is like gonna end as soon as we hit 30. Like low key, I'm still like, what is life even gonna look like when I'm 30? But I still have time. Like even if I'm 50 and I don't get to do some of these goals until I'm then, like that's okay. I'm still gonna be me. I'm still gonna have my same brain. My body might be a little bit older, but I don't know. Part of me just, I love that. There's no deadline. This one says, surround yourself with people who make you happy and give you energy. This is something I've learned as I've gotten older is to keep around the people who make me feel happy, who give good energy and not people who are sucking that out of me. I know that that may sound selfish, but have you ever been in a situation where you leave a hangout and you are worse off? Like I have those and I'm like, why did I go? Why did I do that? I do not feel good. I'm even more agitated than before I went. Like I'm just not in a good space. That is a sign telling you something. So we need to listen and honor that versus when you leave a different hangout, how are you feeling? Are you feeling so good, so energized? Like you might be a little bit tired, but otherwise, like how do you feel inside? And I think that that's something that me and Darian both have been working on is honoring ourselves and how we feel around people to make sure that we're just using our time and our space and our energy around things that are serving us as well. This next one says, to not let my childhood define my future, better days ahead. Oh, this makes me just want to give a younger you a big hug because I know every not everyone's childhood was amazing or fantastic and a lot of people, I know maybe even a lot of you are going to have to relearn a lot of things as you're older and realize that your childhood was not optimal, it was not very good, and you had a really hard childhood. And so I just want to give you a big hug. You're correct. Your childhood does not define your future and there are better days ahead. I'm going to read just a couple more. This one says to learn to be in solitude before you pour into others. And for me, I feel like this is why Darian and I's relationship worked so well. We were both in a very independent stage. We were both extremely independent and driven And we had done kind of that inner work already where I was very happy and content being by myself. I loved who I was in, again, a non-selfish way, but like I felt that. I was like, I am content with who I am. I love who I am. If I'm going to date somebody, it's only going to add to who I am. And I feel like Darian was in that same place. And for us, it just really, really worked. Whereas in other relationships where I hadn't done that work, I hadn't had that time to be alone, to be by myself, to figure out who I am or what I want. It's a little bit hard because sometimes you will look to the other person you're in a relationship with for those validations, for those feelings that you don't have within yourself, or even for that love that you don't have for yourself. So doing that inner work before you pour into others in a relationship or even others around you, like it's so important to have that time to reflect and to try and grow and become that person that you want to be. And again, I love the earlier statement of we create, we build who we want to be. It's not just going to happen. Like we can actively choose who we want to be. Of course, anything can happen, but we can have active decisions and actively choose what we kind of want our life to look like in some shape or form, or at least the person that we want to be, maybe not exactly the life yet, but that is very powering. And I want you to feel empowered that you can do that yourself and to do that inner work along with, you know, health and physical goals. But this is all part of wellness. Your mental health is the driving factor for everything that you do. If you are not okay mentally, you are not going to be okay physically. You're not going to be able to go up to the gym and have a good workout. You're not going to be able to go to work or to school or try to focus on anything because mentally you're suffering. I have been there. It is very hard to focus on any task at hand if I'm not mentally clocked in. So 
do that inner work. And I hope that this episode has helped you with that. Times to reflect and just some positivity to help you maybe move forward, acknowledge some things and figure out ways that we can all just be a little bit better. I am already so inspired by this. Another one that I love is that people come and go in your life for a reason, recognize when it's their time to go and accept. This is something that I've always had a weird concept and relationship with normally because I'm the person who's leaving again because I'm an army brat. I normally just leave every year, every two years. So I didn't really get to establish those really deep connections as a child. But something that's been really cool that I've realized is each place that I've lived for the year or two years, I have built the relationships and the friendships that I needed to while I was there. And then when I would move, I would make a new group of friends and realize they served me in a completely different way. So I really resonate with this that sometimes people, you do have lifelong friends that you keep in contact with others. It's okay if some people just have a season, a time, and a place. All of that is okay. And you definitely want a friendship to be both ways where you're both able to receive something from it. But again, you're not a failure and it's not bad if you have a falling out with a friend. Sometimes interests go, sometimes people's lives change, you move, there are new relationships. Like there's a lot of variables and I just don't want you to feel like you're a failure if any of those relationships start to falter or change at all. Like we're gonna grow up and a lot of and a lot of people change. And I just think that that's okay. It's part of growing older. And I just want to also tell my younger self, like, that's okay. And I want to tell you that's okay. And I almost forgot my girl, Danny, who recommended this episode. She wrote hers in and it says, I didn't need to restrictive eat when I was lifting so hard. I could have seen better results and wouldn't have been such a waste of effort if I had just eaten in a surplus and not in a caloric deficit. And I There were actually a lot of replies to that comment of people who had been struggling with this same thing. And I think a lot of times, again, it goes back to that mentality of just trying to shrink yourself, not get too big, but there are benefits of fueling your body properly so you can gain muscle, so you can gain strength, so that you can see physical results and also just eat and fuel your body properly, enjoy the foods that you want to, and there doesn't have to be any guilt or shame around any of it. I'm going to end on this last one. It says, don't waste any time not being you. And I just want to scream this one because there were so many of these little bubbles that were like, stop comparing yourself. Don't compare yourself. Like have that ingrained in you. Just be your own person. And this is a perfect one to end on because don't waste any time not being you. Be true to who you are. So many times we think we need to act a certain way or be a certain way to either please others or to be with the trends or to whatever it is in your life to fit in. And the only thing we need to do is to be true to ourselves because there's only one of us and that's what makes us all special and unique. And I know that people are probably saying, oh, that's so cliche, but it's so true. It is so true in all aspects of life. Nobody can do exactly what you do. So find out who you are, build, grow, establish that, learn through the process. There's going to be so many ups and downs and just Be true to who you are because there's nothing worse than feeling like you aren't being authentic or true to who you are. Like there are so many times where, and tell me if you're the same, like you go in a situation and you try to be like someone else or you try to fit in and you're like either downplaying yourself or you're trying to overly impress and you just leave feeling the situation feeling icky. You're like, why did I do that? That's just not who I am. Versus situations where you go in and you're just who you are. That's how you're going to find people who vibe with you. That's how you're going to find people who connect and click with you is people find out who you really are and then they will decide for themselves if they like you or if they don't, which is so hard and complicated because for me, I'm like, oh, I want everyone to like me. I want everyone to accept me. Like, oh, it's scary to have that fear of rejection. But like I read earlier, You have to have that in order to have exception. You have to have some kind of rejection to have to be accepted by others. Not everyone is going to love you and that's okay. My favorite quote that I just love is you could be the juiciest peach in the world and somebody out there is still not going to like peaches and that has nothing to do with you and that has everything to do with them. It's going to be okay. And that is, I guess, what I would end on. My note to my younger self is remember be who you are, keep showing up, and love yourself the way you are. Be true 
to that and you are not going to have any regrets because you are living your own life in your own timeline. So this was a really fun, reflective little episode and kind of perfect around this time of year because Darian and I just celebrated our seven-year anniversary. I just had my birthday and we just have a lot of time reflecting and just thinking of where I was versus where I am now. And so I hope that this was helpful. If something stuck out to you, I'd love to hear it. Or if you have more that we didn't get to read, comment them on the Instagram post for today. And if you haven't already rated and reviewed this podcast, go ahead and do that. I love you guys so much. I hope you have the best week ever. Big hugs. And I will chat to you all next week for some more fun and games. Bye. You're listening to the fun and games podcast with your host, Brittany Lupton. Thanks for listening to another episode. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And we'll see you all next time for some more fun and games. Bye. Bye.